My name is Andrew Collar and I am a lecturer at SUNY Maritime College. We're standing in the SUNY Maritime Tug and Barge Simulator. We're positioned right in the middle of New York Harbor. This simulator is used for cadet training. It's also used for professional mariner training. What you can do with this equipment is you can put a tug and barge, a towing vessel and a vessel being pushed in New York Harbor, Seattle, San Francisco, uh, all for mariner training, all to make it as realistic as possible. Operating a ship, you need fundamental navigation skills. Basic plotting of a course, knowing what's going on around you, situational awareness. You need to understand the elements and the weather, incorporating safe navigation and bringing all of that together uh, is really what is, is key to navigating a vessel. In the east coast of the United States, we have what's called the Gulf Stream Current. And that Gulf Stream comes right up the east coast of the U.S. and it goes all the way through the Atlantic. And it works its way all the way over to the west coast of Europe. The benefit of following the Gulf Stream, for example, if you are trying to walk into the wind, it's quite a bit difficult. But if the wind is behind you, that wind is pushing you. Ocean currents work the same way. Ocean currents can push a vessel or they can push against the vessel. If you can have the Gulf Stream push your vessel as you transit across the Atlantic, you'll have what's called a following current pushing you through the ocean. The reason you would want to navigate with a current is because you can actually increase your fuel efficiency. If you have a current behind you, a stern of you, as we say in the merchant marines, you're actually going to save fuel because your ship doesn't have to work quite as hard to get through the water. If you were navigating into a current, you're going to have to burn more fuel to go the exact same speed. If you're on a large container ship, you actually have quite a bit of what's referred to as sail area. So if the wind is blowing real hard, a container ship with, with high freeboard, basically lots of metal showing, as well as all of those containers on the side of the ship, that's going to act just like a sail, and it will blow the ship off course a little bit. A typical trip, for example, from New York to the Rock of Gibraltar, if a ship is transiting at 10 knots, 10 knots is basically, give or take, 10 miles an hour. If you do that for 24 hours, you're going to travel 240 miles in one day. How many miles is it from New York to Gibraltar? Divide it by 240, and that would give you the number of days it would take you to make the transit. The world moves because of the maritime industry. 90% of everything moves by ocean-based freight. There are ships that are specifically built to carry cars. They're called car carriers. Container ships, they carry all the containers that we see on the highways every single day. A box of cereal in the grocery store came off of a container, whether it was from the U.S. or whether it was imported. Imagine you're plotting a course from New York to New Orleans. What would be the most efficient way to get there? 